Step right up, step right up, it's the Carnival of Country. Because this is the week we have the British government doing their level best to adopt Robinsonism. And unfortunately, no, that doesn't mean a touch of sugar in every dollop as you embrace a selection of complementary colours. In fact, rather the opposite. I mean, this Robinson. Tommy Robinson became a towering five foot four figure of British politics in the late 2000s, starting the English Defence League with his cousin Kevin in a rags to rochers story of pursuing their dreams. And reasonable people's nightmares. Since then, he's managed to somehow, in an ocean of awful characters, bubble up to the top of the British right's political discourse. Indeed, think of him like a singular bubble of hot air floating its way up to the brim of a tank of freshly brewed and untreated sewage. Which, weirdly, is also something we've become way more familiar with in other oceans of awfulness. Anyway, Robinson made a name for himself via the EDL's demonstrations and being convicted of contempt of court. And there were reports of punching people outside football games, to punching migrants in Italy, to punching people at Ascot, to punching policemen. You get the idea. His is a politics that appeals to base-level racist crayon-eaters who need to be kept on toddler reins. Anyway, this week is the week we've seen the Conservative government drift further to the right. I know. By embracing Robinsonism. That's right. Not content with harpooning dinghies and sharing the frustrations of travel lodge rioters and refusing to apologise for language last heard in the fucking 1930s. Now the two Sues are banging on about Asian grooming gangs. Ah, good. Good. It's always nice to hear the greatest hits, isn't it? Now, look, I accept there was probably some hesitancy on the part of the police and the local authorities to demonise and paint men of a South Asian origin all with the same brush for fear of looking like bloody racist police. But here is the thing with that. It's already illegal to groom kids. It's already illegal to be a racist police officer. So the answer to both of those issues is to adequately fund the institutions responsible. Give the police the money they need to attract a better quality of candidate. Give support services the cash they need to rehouse and care for the kids getting abducted. But what you absolutely can't do is slash those public services and then when they fail, you just turn around and go, Oh, who did it? It was a circle of Asian men, you say? Well, that sounds like the problem. Sounds like it was cultural. Like, if we were going to take that Tory logic and really run with it, we should be expecting a government task force any day now to get to grips with the pressing matter of Cornish nonce bastards. Oh, what's that? You didn't hear about that? Well, in 2010 and 2019, there were reports of members of the recognised Cornish minority running a ring. Yeah. And what does that say about the Cornish guys, huh? Why were they so interested in pure Saxon kids? Why couldn't they stick to their own? Why can't they integrate? I mean, it does sound like they were trying, to be fair. Oh, don't be disgusting. Anyway, so yeah, that's where we're at. The Home Secretary on British TV babbling about how the men were almost all of Pakistani origin. In spite of the fact that when you pan out, the representation actually evens out. And it turns out that, yes, although things like financial services and the comedy industry and tech struggle to embrace diversity, weirdly, when it comes to nonce burgers, they're actually a evenly represented bunch. So how about that, festival lineups? You've been beaten in the diversity game by paedophiles. Nice job. But British Muslim grooming gangs are abusing white girls. It's Muslim men, they're, they're, they're Muslim. Now, is it just me? Or does wheeling this shit out always feel like a misfire? It's like when a shit pop star pivots into underground garage with a grime tip and you're like, who is this for? Like anyone that's into underground grime won't be caught dead listening to this bitch. And all of her traditional fans will hate it because it's not heart FM bubblegum pop. And in the same way, who are the Tories trying to appeal to? Like, they've been on this fifth gear Daily Express nonsense for a couple of years now. And where is the polling? Labour 11 point lead, then a 19 point lead, then a 23 point, then a 27 point lead. So what kind of lunatic Tory strategist goes, yeah, yeah, you know, the hard right culture war racist stuff that we've been doing that's resulted in an 80 seat majority tanking to a consistent 20 point lead for Labour? We should do more of that. And people with brains are like, you really think that's the way to go? Really? You're really proud of that shit? Absolutely. We've performed brilliantly with, with, with all of this nonsense. Right. Yeah. OK. OK. So so you'll put conservative MP back in your Twitter profile, yeah? You won't send out 
green leaflets or try to be ambiguous about which political party you're associated with. You'll say it loud and proud, yeah? I represent the Conservative Party, will you? Yeah? Well, well, well I, I, um, uh, uh, no. Like, the Tories are like fucking Talk TV and GB News, you know, sort of amping up this anti-woke culture war nonsense and then wondering why there's no fucking viewers. Like, that stuff might get you commissioned or printed or invited on a panel to argue with people, but there's not really a market for it. It's like the great irony of the whole go woke, go broke thing. GB News lost £30 million last year. They're fighting over scraps. Like, it might be all you ever read about on the front pages of the tabloids, but nationally, very few people bang on about asylum seekers. Nobody is on board for Rwanda both figuratively and literally. So actually what this all tells us is that this is a Conservative Party who know they're fucked, but who desperately crave the approval of tabloids and the very base levels of the political right. But those tabloids don't reflect the attitudes of the general public, because if they did, you'd be seeing a poll lead from them endlessly obsessing over trans rights and yapping about small boats. And there's not. What we're seeing is those tabloids cheering them on while the general public continue to abandon them. Honestly, like the Tories at this point are like a wholesale parliamentary version of your mate who becomes progressively more and more of a dick because he's joined a Discord chat that egg him on to behave like more and more of a cunt. So he becomes ever more radicalised to smash glasses and behave erratically in the pub by these people egging him on, you know? Meanwhile, you and your mates are like, God, Ted's got really fucking weird, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he has. It's a bit of a problem. No, are you still going to invite him to your barbecue next week? <sighs> Fucking no. Why? Is he still coming to your wedding? What, so he can drop a few racial slurs and shit in the ashtrays there? <laughs> I think not. Anyway, love to stay and rant. I really would, but uh, I've got to... Fuck, I've got to go. Yes, I've got a hell of a car journey today. I've got to go and pick up your dad from Cornwall. <laughs> there he is.